Well, we have some new information this evening now about a horrific attack police say was racially motivated. We are talking about the man accused of stabbing two teenagers on a max train over the weekend. Adrian Cummins is now charged with attempted murder, assault and bias crime. Now, it turns out prosecutors say Cummins should have been in jail at the very time of that attack, though we've learned he was turned away and released despite a judge's order to keep him in custody. Investigative reporter Evan Watson went to try to squeeze some answers at what appears to be a gap in our system. This is Adrian Cummins in court Tuesday. He's currently being held in jail, accused of a dangerous attack at a Mac station on Saturday. But earlier in August, Portland police arrested Cummins. He had an outstanding warrant for failing to show up to court on charges of menacing with a knife. That happened earlier this summer. A judge ordered that Cummins needed to be held in jail until a hearing in late September. A police officer brought him to the jail, but jail officials and Corrections Health denied booking him. After KGW pressed for answers as to why Cummins wasn't held, a Multnomah County Sheriff's Office spokesman said on Wednesday that Cummins wasn't held in jail because of health or medical reasons. The spokesman did say health reasons are the most common example. Someone would be denied booking. Corrections Health makes that decision. Then a person might be taken to the hospital for treatment or released with a citation. Portland police say in this case, an officer gave Cummins a citation before releasing him. The officer's report says Cummins' condition was not an acute medical condition, but something that could be shared with other inmates if he was booked in a closed environment like a jail. PPB says giving a citation when someone can't be booked is common because it's time-consuming to have an officer supervise someone at a hospital before bringing them back to the jail for booking. We still don't know if this is common practice even when a judge orders someone held in jail who may be a risk to the public. In this case, Cummins was released from custody and is now accused of robbing a store, stabbing two boys in a racially motivated attack, and running from police. And Evan's here now. I mean, Evan, great you were able to get some clarity here, right. though there's still one outstanding question. The court actually wanted Cummins held. That did not happen. Isn't the system designed to keep somebody accused of violent crimes, even if they have health issues, in custody? You would think so, right? At least in theory. Right. But in practice, I did talk to Portland police just 30 minutes ago or said, you know, when looking at this system and how it works, that often you'll write that citation because it takes too long to go to the hospital and wait and then bring someone back to the jail. But... The question here is kind of the legal standard. Are there different types of holds coming from a judge that one would be looking at that when you're looking at the judicial hold that <laughs> they would say, hey, for no reason this person should be released to the public versus a citation is OK in this case. Uh, the Portland police uh, spokesperson I talked to said in practice, we just deal with what's on the ground. You have to check it more into that. So that's what I get to follow right. up. Right. As with most up. things, it's a gray area here. Yeah. All right. Uh, you had quite the day. How challenging was it to get all of these answers between the police and the sheriff's office and the D.A.? Very, I've got conflicting information at some times. It was a very interesting day of trying to get to those answers. I will say this is one of those cases where each individual agency said, hey, we only involved in this part of it, but you'd have to ask that one for this part of it. And in any case like this, David, when there's some kind of accountability or responsibility, no one wants to take that full responsibility of the whole situation, but still needed questions here that we need to get answers right, to. Right, of course. On a much more serious note here, uh, the two 17-year-olds, the two teenagers who were stabbed, how are they doing? What happens next here? It was initially reported as uh, non-life-threatening injuries, and since then we've learned more about the severity of that heart surgery that had to have. But um, as of now, we, we hear that they are recovering and uh, hopefully to hear great positive news on that to come. And the next steps here, we have a preventative detention hearing for the alleged suspect tomorrow as the prosecutors want to make sure he is not released this time around. So we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. All right, Evan, appreciate you digging into that. Thanks so much. Thanks, David.